Hi, how you doing? I just want to uh, take a little bit of time and talk about something that's going to happen uh, today. Uh, today's December 21st, uh, 2020. And I just want to read a few verses first uh, before I talk about that. And here's a verse in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. And it says, And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So nations are going to come to your light. And today is a, a special day. Uh, there's a lot of talk out there today uh, that is going to be this uh, great uh, event that's going to be happening. And it's gonna, actually, it's going to be happening in a couple hours, uh, maybe three hours from now, right around there, right after sunset. And at sunset, there's going to be up in the sky, we're going to have Jupiter and Saturn um, meeting together with, with our naked eye, if we were to look at it, it would actually look like both planets are kissing each other. And with that, um, from here, uh, a lot of people would say, uh, and that's an unusual event, a lot of people would say that that's the Christmas star that the wise men uh, followed uh, all the way from the Far East to Jerusalem. And that was like a 600-mile journey that they went on uh, to go s see this star, uh, to find the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, uh, Jesus. And uh, so these wise men, uh, they, it's believed that they were astronomers and that they studied the stars. And when they saw that event in the sky... Uh, it got their attention to a point that they uh, traveled 600 miles uh, to go find uh, the Jesus, the king of Israel, in a manger. Um, but I want to also uh, say, well, it's going to be a cloudy day today, uh, so probably you're not going to see it, but um, it is. It is an unusual event. Um, from what I did some research on with all of that, I'm just going to share a couple things about that. Now, the last time that star was actually seen by a human uh, was 800 years ago, uh, 1226 A.D., which would be the, the, the mid, medieval days. And uh, 400 years after that, it showed again in 1623, but uh, nobody was able to see it. And that was right before Galile Galileo, he um, invented the telescope and actually founded all the solar system and all the planets. And in the old days... Um, they used to think uh, that uh, the planets were just wandering stars. Uh, you had the planets moving around, but all the stars out there, they're stationary. And so when they saw these stars moving, they, they call it, you know, like I said, that they were, they were stars that weren't, in one place. They were wandering stars. That's what they called them. But anyway, this is a big uh, deal. Uh, what's going to happen tonight? Uh, it happens every 400 years. And that's a long time because Jupiter, it takes, uh, let's see here, what do I got here? With Jupiter, it takes 12 years to go around the sun. And with Saturn, it takes 30 years uh, to go around the sun. And uh, so by the time that all happens again, and they do meet, 
but they don't meet as close as what they're going to be um, tonight. And uh, it's a big event. And a lot of people will say that that's the star uh, that the wise men um, followed. But, you know, that's only one of the theories. And I'm not quite convinced that that's the theory of the Bible. <laughs> um, there's a lot of other theories, too. Uh, first of all, th this event here, it happened in... I'll give you a date. Uh, let's see here. I think it was 7 BC is when that happened. When they kept dating it back, that's when it happened. Seven years before Christ. And, but there were other times uh, that they had conjunctions like that. It wasn't just what Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, there were conjunctions that happened all the time with the planets. And sometimes the planets will meet with stars as well, and they call that a conjunction. And in 3 BC, there was actually seven conjunctions that happened at the same time, and it had nothing to do with uh, Saturn. Uh, it was actually uh, Venus and the star Regulus, uh, and that's a fixed star, but Venus moves. And Venus is the brightest star in the sky. And Regulus is the brightest, I mean, uh, the brightest planet in the sky. That's Venus. And Regulus is the brightest star in the sky. And they met together. And, uh, and they met more than once in a period of one uh, I think it was one and a half years, and they kept they kept conjuncting together uh, along the way. And one of the times uh, it was Jupiter, and I believe Venus was had a conjunction as well in that uh, th year and a half time period, which would make a whole lot more sense if you're going to travel. Uh, 800 years, uh, I mean 600 miles, uh, to go to Jerusalem, uh, and that star only shows up once, like tonight, like that, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of, doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they had a star to follow like that. But that is another theory that happened. But there are all kinds of other theories in the Bible, too. Some people said it was a comet. Uh, some people think, I'm going to pull out a few things. Uh, it was a supernova that happened. And some, uh, some people think it was a, a heliacal rising, which is a star that would still show up once the sun comes out. The star is still there in the daytime, and that happens at a certain time of the year. And it's an unusual event. And there's actually some religions that have a belief when that star comes out that there's a, a special things that happen, favors from their gods. Um, again, these were astronomers. And there are a few other theories as well. But um, I, really, I really have a hard time with all of that. Um, First of all, the Bible tells us that we shouldn't be looking at astrology, for one thing, and we shouldn't be governing our, our lives, you know, according to how the stars are and how the planets are lining up and all those kinds of things. But I really think, you know, and I'm going to get into uh, the book of Matthew right now, and... Um, Let's see, Matthew, right at, I'm going to read this event. I'm going to read about the, this event of the birth of Christ in the book of Matthew. I'm going to read the whole story, and then I'm going to point out what I want to say. And it says this. Now, after Jesus was born, <coughs> excuse me, in Bethlehem, in Judea, in the days of Herod, the king 
Behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he began to, <coughs> to inquire of them where the Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child, and when you have found him, report to me that I too may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went their way, lo, the star, which had been seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And when the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and they came to the house and saw the child where Mary, his mother, and they all fell and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream, not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see in this story, you know, these wise men, they saw this star, and it caught their attention. It caught their attention to a point that they were get ready to pack up 600 miles away in what we know as mo modern-day Iraq area right now. And that's where they were, and they traveled across the desert with their camels uh, on a long journey to get where Jesus was. Now, there's a lot of things in tradition uh, I want to talk about. Uh, well, one of the things is the star in the east, that's not really true. They traveled west to get to Jerusalem. So they, they were in the east, and they traveled west to Jerusalem. And the other thing is, some people say they were three wise men. And the only reason why uh, people think that, and it's on Christmas cards and all those kinds of things, uh, the only reason why they think that is because um, it's because of the three gifts these magi brought when they saw Jesus. And uh, so they just automatically thought that there were going to be three magi. It could have been more. And I, I'm sure it was a big caravan, and it wasn't just three men that went to, to Israel. And tradition even gives these three men names. And their names is Gaspar, Melchior, and Belshazzar. That's the names that tradition give them. So they followed this star, and they traveled day and night. And to me, it took a whole lot of faith for them uh, to do that. And again, uh, this, they saw something that caught their attention uh, that made them want to travel. And, um, and I'm under the persuasion that this star wasn't a planet, and it wasn't a star, and it was a, a supernatural event taking place. Because there are a lot of supernatural events that took place in the time of the birth of Jesus. Mary being a virgin, having a child, and Elizabeth being barren, you know, had a child, which was John the Baptist. 
and then an angels were showing up everywhere, it seemed like. And, and even in this case, something had to get these men's attention to want to travel so far to find Jesus. And I, and I really think it was kind of like what Moses experienced when he saw the burning bush in the, out in the desert. And God spoke to him out there. It was a supernatural event. It, there was a tree burning, but the, the tree was on fire, but the branches actually did not burn. And, you know, and it was supernatural. And I really think it was an angel that was guiding them every step of the way. Like in the Old Testament, they had what they called the Shekinah glory. And it was a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud in the day that would lead the people of Israel for 40 years and 40, 40 years, day and night, in the wilderness. It would move, it would stop, it would rest. And, and, I, and I really believe that it was a supernatural thing they were following. And uh, that, th that would explain to me how they would see it all the time. Because if I was to walk someplace, let's say, 600 miles towards a certain planet or a certain star, when I get there 600 miles later, the star is still far away from me. And I can never get close to it. And, and so it doesn't make sense that that would happen. And I really believe that it was an angel that was leading them all along the way. And to them, they, it looked like a star. And angels are a very, uh, they're a spectacular being, and they can shine like that. And they, those angels were leading these uh, magi along the way. And, you know, and what gives me that is I read it a little while ago in a book of Matthew. And it says in verse 9, it's uh, Matthew 2, 9. And having heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over where the child was. So that means the star actually stopped where the child was, and they knew, okay, right where that child, that star stopped, that's where we need to go. That's where the baby is. And uh, so that star led them right to Jesus. And the light of God is going to lead us to Jesus. And, you know, and it takes faith to believe in the supernatural and miracles. And everything in the Bible is a miracle. It takes faith to believe, you know, that all the animals were drawn to the ark and Noah didn't have to chase them down. It takes faith uh, to believe in Jonah in a whale. It takes faith to believe that Mary, a virgin, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It takes faith to believe in salvation. It takes faith, you know, to believe in the resurrection that Jesus rose from the dead. And the whole Bible is full of, of things that it takes faith to believe in. And you know, these magi, they followed this supernatural star, and I don't think we can explain it with, with science or whatever it is. Everybody has their explanation. And there are other times when there were other conjunctions, and I looked it up online. And there were other times that conjunctions happened, and they said, oh, that's the Bethlehem star. That's the Bethlehem star. And, and you know, there's a lot of opinions of what that is, but that's all in the natural realm. See, without faith, the Bible tells us, it's impossible to please God. We have to believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the longest trip that any of us will ever make is an 18-inch trip from our head to our heart. Okay? 
We could have all the intellectual knowledge in the world and try to figure things out with God. But if we don't take that 18-inch trip to our heart and exercise faith in our heart and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he truly could be led by a supernatural star or that a, a virgin can be conceived by the Holy Spirit that he could die on a cross for our sins and our sins will be forgiven and washed by the blood of Jesus. See, it takes faith for all of these things. And the only way we could get to God is if we take that journey of faith with him. And it's so important that we do. And uh, I just wanted to uh, share that with you. And these wise men, these magi, uh, they, they showed up. We can't let our lives be governed by the stars. And we can't let the stars tell us what our day is going to be like. We have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and read the Word of God by faith and apply faith to the things we're reading and, and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and confess it with our mouth and we shall be saved. Now these magi, they traveled a long ways. And the, when they first got there, that took a lot of faith for them to do that. I couldn't imagine having that much faith. We're just going to leave our home, and we're going to go this far to find a king. And when they got there, and when the star stopped, like the Bible says, when the star stopped, they ended up bowing down and worshiping the king of kings and lord of lords and gave him gifts. You know, in this story, you know, they gave him gifts. The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold represents the kingship of Jesus. Frankincense represents the priesthood of Jesus. Jesus is our priest high priest. The myrrh represents the suffering that Jesus was going to undertake when he died on the cross. And they almost gave these gifts prophetically to Jesus. And I really believe it was for Joseph and Mary's benefit to help build their faith, to know all the stuff they already heard about Jesus and what Jesus was going to be. It was just another thing to confirm to them that what they were doing is they were, they were going to be taking care of the Son of God that would die for all our sins. Now, that's pretty cool. And also, in this story, you know, and I shared this yesterday, and the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, the audio didn't work yesterday, and I really wanted people to hear this uh, message at Christmas time. There's three groups of people in this story. You know, we had the wise men, you know, that sought Jesus. You know, they responded to the light that was leading them. You know, all nations will be drawn to the light, like I read in Isaiah. And they responded to that. And they found Jesus by faith. And then when I see you know, the scribes and the Pharisees, they pulled out all the prophecies when these wise men showed up and said, yeah, the, the Bible, the prophecies say there's going to be a king born in Bethlehem. And they were looking at all the prophecies. Now, these scribes and these Pharisees, they were living in the exact town where Jesus was born. You would think, okay, after hearing this news from the Magi, they would have went to go see Jesus too. But they were indifferent with it all. And, you know, and there's a whole group of people out there that are indifferent with the things of God. They really are. And you know what? People like that are never going to find Jesus. Even if we ha celebrate and do whatever we do at Christmas, the most important gift we could have is Jesus. And then I see someone else in this story. I see someone that was hostile towards Jesus. 
and it was King Herod. He even, he even like was letting the wise men think that, oh, once you find this Jesus, come back and tell me so I could go worship him too. But he had, an Ill, in, he had Ill intentions in his heart. He wanted to kill this king. And there's a lot of people hostile towards the word of God. And they don't want to hear about the word of God. Or they don't want to hear about Jesus. Or they're hostile towards these things. And you know, someone like that will never ever find Jesus. And they're not going to get saved and go to heaven. So you know, and I need to ask you, what group are you in? You know, are, are you... Are you letting God lead you towards Jesus by faith? Are you one of those wise men that are going to be wise enough to exercise your faith in a son of God who came as a baby, died on the cross for your sins, and you're going to exercise your faith so you could be saved? You're going to be indifferent towards the gospel? how it doesn't matter and it doesn't move you or anything like that and the things of this world is a whole lot better for you than your faith in Jesus or are are you in that camp of being hostile towards Jesus or the gospel and maybe if you're in that camp maybe you got hurt along the way or some somebody let you down or uh, you got hurt in a church or whatever it is Don't be hostile towards God because Jesus is your only way to salvation. So I want to pray right now. And I'm going to ask you at Christmas time in this season, you know, I kind of hope we see this event tonight. I think it's going to be pretty cool to see Saturn and Jupiter together. But I'm going to put myself on a record. I don't think that was the star of Bethlehem. And I don't think about all those other theories either. That's man's way of trying to figure out God. And God is, he works in the supernatural. And we have to come to God where he is with faith. And and I, like I honestly believe, it was an angel that led those uh, magi right to where Jesus was so they could worship him. And they found them. They found Jesus because of their faith. And, and, and if you're here tonight watching me, or you're going to see this later, you could say this prayer with me. Because our Heavenly Father gave us the gift of Jesus so that he could die for our sins in this world that's fallen apart. And um, if you say this prayer with me, and you really mean it in your heart, That would be the beginning. See, exercise your faith, and that will be the beginning of your journey, your new life that God gives you through Jesus. And I'm going to have you pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins. And I want to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. And the the book of Romans says that if I do that and I do it with faith, I shall be saved. And Jesus saved me. I know this world is falling apart and I want to find you by faith, O God. I have enough faith to believe that you are the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing me. And thank you, God, for saving my soul. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, feel free to call our church or tell another Christian that you gave your heart to Jesus so you can start growing in your faith. And most of all, I just want to wish you all a merry, merry, merry Christmas. God bless you, and have a good day.